Okay, what, Ed? Well, first thing, going to that side is good. Going this side tells me something. First thing is, look at this down here. I've got my node 2 to my node 9. I only got nine nodes, which is pretty good here. I've got all those independent variables. Granted, I don't have a lot of data, 102. But it's telling me I got my 4.8 way over here. But I've got actually some pretty good spreads here telling me I'm splitting. I'm going to show you graphically why they split in these situations here. Okay? So graphically, I can represent this. This is what I tell my customers. I'm going to show you what that means, and you're going to see why they spread and what it means to you. Okay? I'm going to come back to it in a few minutes here. Let me go to the next one. This is my importance, and this is really neat. I tell my customers, you know what's back to that Martha Anning, who I know really well for that study? They came out and said, you know what? If the CEO bonus wants it, they will do it. You know what? It's important. They found out about errors. What's the first one up here? CEO's bonus. You know who? It isn't about you. It's about the CEO. It's about the executive's bonus. That's the cutter. GDP three years. Then it's about the conditions. The first two is the motivation. The third one is about the conditions. It goes back to the studies that were done in 89. I'm motivated as a CEO to get, keep my bonus and my stock. What's the next factor? The conditions in the GDP. They found out if your sector is declining, you're going to be motivated to do something about gerrymandering the error. Now, how do I say this? We never cheat in accounting. You know what a good test for an accountant is? What's one and one? No, whatever number you want it to be. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke on you. I shouldn't have said that to you. We can do another one. Uh, here I am now with uh, uh, number zero, which is 67 out 73. I think I did that right now. For learning, uh, I did this for uh, tests. You can see I'm just following up with that pretty much here. And here I have it for improvement. What I tell my customers here is I look at this and say to myself, I'm looking for improvement, and it goes back to confirming the studies that were done before. I am going to the right on this thing, on the left here, where I say GDP again is improving with the CEOs and C executives, and it's all confirming everything that we'll see in the next chart here. And here we go with the root splits in this one, which is all technical a little bit. But here, uh, my customers understand this one. And I graphically show them that the most important things can be shown as, here we go to CEO's bonus broken up by categories of what they're spread up to. So they can see that the first ones are the, the 0 to 500. The next ones are here. So I can show them then that this whole example can be broken up where they can understand a pie chart situation for them. That's kind of what I do for them. And then the next level are executive bonuses for them. So they can visually see what happens to them. Here's where I think we'll go back to you, George. Uh, the first level is the GDP, which splits up left, which is where we want to see CEO's bonus, which splits the CEO stock, which goes to the right, then CEO's bonus again, which account receivable turnover. That's the first time that it gets into a company's data of accounts receivable turnover. All the other ones are related to somebody at top. That accounts receivable turnover is the first number you see about the firm's aggregate number. The rest are NBIT, net income before taxes, executive bonus, and then sales for the company. So if you're looking at account revenue totals, and that's why I say this to you, is you're looking at it from a perspective, what can I measure? Where can I get account revenues? Now, I'm going to say it this because I got asked this question. How do I use it in other ways? I'm using CART to predict. It's not a comparison tool. I use the independent variables to help me predict. What can I predict? I can predict any categorical yes, no. What can be a yes, no? Anything that I can define for my customers from an accounting auditing point of view. What are the 
issues going on in auditing and accounting, many things. It could be a pricing issue. It could be an auditing issue. An example could be in risk assessment. What could be an issue in risk assessment? Bankruptcy protection, bankruptcy assessment, going concern assessment. It could be looking is, is our test of controls adequate in a survey? What do I do in a survey of tests of controls? I survey the firm to determine if my tests of controls are adequate. When they come back, I do a ranking of them. I could use CART to do that and determine if they, quote, make that successful in the firm in being yes or no in my risk assessment of test of controls. Test controls are required by SOX, Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, in 401 situations now. So CART can be used in a number of ways in accounting and auditing to meet public accounting standards. So it isn't that I'm looking at this and saying, I gotta just do revenue, accounting revenue assessment. It's a tool of prediction, okay? The benefits I see is many. In logistic regression, what did I get out of that? I got a one, can I predict categorical, yes, no. I got one statistical significance, one. That's all I got, right? That's all I received. What else? Not much more. What did I get out of CART? Okay, I can do some visual viewing of how it flowed. I can do some business analysis of how it flowed. I can do some synthesis of what happened. That's different. Okay, let's compare it to neural networks, because I'm very familiar with them, because I use neural solutions out of Florida. Neural solutions will input, either if it's single level or three hidden levels or whatever else, it'll give you a solution, but you don't know what, how it came out to its conclusions. It's hidden. It will not tell you what between GDP and the end. It doesn't tell, it cannot tell you. It doesn't, if it's back propagation, if it's probabilistic or whatever, it does not know. It cannot tell you. So it's hidden from you. You cannot guess any better than it did. So CAR to me is that ability to at least give you the chance to put your cerebral mind to determine what is going on in the firm. Now, this model was able, let me go finish up here real quick to give me some ability to get my mind to put a handle around a problem, a prediction. Now, I did mining, as you can see, I did uh, several firms which didn't come out as good as I would like. So I don't think I had enough firms in the thing. I had 24, 23, 26, and some of the results were not that good. But the point was that if I had more firms, I would have done better analytical procedures, okay? And you know what I mean. Analytical procedures are you looking at ratios for looking for unusual situations that would indicate a pattern that you should look into for auditing. But the thing is that I, I want to stress to you is that uh, the, the whole thing about CART is I look at this situation at my conclusions. I was able to predict 20 out of 29 with CART for errors. With logistic, I was able to predict 10 out of 25. CART mispredicted more in non-error firms, but let me tell you something, I don't care. Why? Because the only thing I really care about is my error firms. Yes, that's really what's important for me as an auditor, because that's where the problem is. Because if it's a non-error firm, there is no problem outside the efficiency issue. I'm more worried about the ones that have a problem. I want a tool that will predict them. I want ability to identify them so I can correct that problem.